this is the real Tom Rose, and this problem is really strange. So they give you an, uh, what looks like a quadratic equation, but it's actually an inequality. And they want the solution set, which is actually going to be some kind of range of values of x. So check out all the answer choices, and you'll see these ranges. There are a bunch of ways that you could solve this, particularly if you're willing to memorize um, different procedures. So you might have been taught a procedure for something like this. Personally, I have a really hard time remembering all those complicated procedures, and they never come up again. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to solve this um, conceptually using a procedure that you do have memorized, which will, um, which will allow you to do these kind of generically kind of in any setting. So first of all, if you have a quadratic, as you can imagine, the first thing you need to do is factor it. So if, you don't, if you're not familiar with factoring quadratics, I would go look that up because I'm going to kind of fast forward through that. Um, this quadratic factors into, what is it? Let's see, two x terms, and it's going to be x plus 1 and x minus 4 is less than 0. So that's the factored version of this inequality. And now what I want you to do is think conceptually on a, on a number line. So they want to know when is this less than zero? Well, when do two numbers, when multiplied together, when are they less than zero? They're less than zero whenever the signs are opposite, right? So for example, if we go to, uh, if we go to really large numbers for x, like say when x is 100, right? The first term will be positive. And the second term will also be positive, right? 100 plus 1 is 101. 100 minus 4 is 96, both positive. So if we have a positive times a positive. So when x is 100, we're up here in positive territory, right? Positive will be above the line, and negative will be below the line. Now, if we look at, um, I'll do this in a different color. Um, when is this going to change? When will they not be, so I just picked a really large number. At what point will it switch where one of them is positive and, uh, and one of them is negative? Um, well, it looks like it'll switch somewhere around um, x equals 4 because that's when this subtraction becomes big enough to change the sign. So let's not look at x equals 4 exactly because we're going to get a 0 here. Actually, we can, we can put that on here. This will be, when will this equal 0? It'll equal 0 when x is equal to 4, right? So here is, this, this axis is values of x. So here is 100. We showed that it was positive. When it's zero, when it's four, we'll get a zero. If it's slightly less than four, say when it's like three. Um, oops, don't put that on the line. If x is three, what will we get? So if x is three for the first term, we'll get x plus one is four, so that's positive. When x is three on the second term, we get three minus four is negative one, so that's negative. Positive times negative is negative. So if we're at three, we get a negative number. And uh, let's keep going. So when else do you think it's going to change? Um, you might think, oh, maybe it changes at 1. And you could try plugging in x equals 1. Um, x equals 1 will give you a negative number here. Um, x, e x equals 1 plus 1 will give you a positive there. So that's actually still negative at x equals 1. Um, what about negative 1? When x is negative 1, That'll exactly balance out this one. So we'll get, if x is negative 1, we get another 0. So let's put um, negative 1 on the chart. And here's your another 0. And if you go, what you'll see is if you go further to the left, uh, or more negative on x than negative 1, it'll be positive again. So let's say we plugged in x of negative 2. Um, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, so that's negative. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6, also negative. So now we have two negative numbers multiplied together, that's positive. So our function looks something like this. And when is it negative? It's negative between negative 1 and 4. It's this region. That's what they asked for. When is it less than 0? And it is less than 0 between negative 1 and 4. So we have to figure out the answer choice that does that. So this one, number 5, says all the values of x that are bigger than negative 1, right? That's this region, and less than negative 4. So that's the set where everything is, where it is negative.